Hey guys, welcome back. Today starts the first day of a three day video stretch where I'm gonna talk about the little nuances or five things you need to know about smallmouth, largemouth, and spotted bass. Each day I'm gonna do one. Today we're gonna start with smallmouth bass. And these are five things that you need to know that I don't know you know that the general public all all know about the fish but it's five things that if you know it will help you catch more fish when targeting smallmouth spotted bass or largemouth uh you know i really feel like all three species are very very different they all act differently you know they're obviously different breeds of of bass but they all have nuances that i think really are different about each other so i'm going to give you a list of five for each species and you know feel free guys in the comment section if there's something specific that you uh want to or want to address and you think is something that's i missed please share it in the comment section it would be something that uh you know i think everybody needs to know you know so if you're an experienced smallmouth fisherman and you feel strongly that there's one uh one additional nuance about smallmouth that are different than other species please throw it in here by all means this is not a list of only five it's just five uh that i came up with for each and today we're going to talk about smallmouth so the first thing about smallmouth that you need to know is that they are very much predator species and they really key in on specific targets and for the most part, I'm going to say that their preferred forage species, uh, species are bait fish. But once they key in on a specific bait fish, that's kind of what they eat. So what I mean by that is if you're on a lake with a lot of perch, the smallmouth really key in on perch. If you're on a goby place, they key in on gobies. Uh, if you're on a, a place up north that has alewife or smelt or cisco, the biggest smallmouth in the lakes will key in on those types of bait fish. Obviously, they will eat bluegill, they'll eat crayfish, but in my opinion, those are not the primary forage for the, for the smallmouth in those lakes. And because of that, the tip number one is to use longer profiled baits, longer skinny profiles. It's one reason jerk baits work so well mimics all of those species I just rattled off. Perch, Cisco, Alewife, uh, Gobi are all a longer, skinnier minnow. They are not a, a sunfish style build. So because of that, I recommend using longer, skinnier baits. So, you know, your jerk baits, if you're throwing a topwater, a lot of times the walking topwater baits, that spook style bait is a really good way to go for smallmouth. Uh, you know, if you're throwing uh, uh, soft plastic jerk baits. It's another great mimicker, but I, whatever bait you're choosing to throw, I think it's better to throw a longer profile bait. Now you can't get too big. You will catch some big smallmouth bass on giant baits. And I'm talking giant, like musky. I can't tell you how many smallmouth bass I have caught fishing for musky on giant musky baits. So you can't get too big, but tip number two, don't ever go too small. Smallmouth love to snack on little bite-sized things. You know, that whole that whole idea of putting a bowl of M&Ms in front of you and you maybe not eating the whole bowl, but you're going to eat one or two. Smallmouth are that way. They love small baits. Uh, whether that's, you know, your your Ned rigs or, you know, your drop shots, whatever it is, guys, they love to eat baits that are an inch to two inches or three inches big. Now, I know that kind of goes against what I just said with longer, skinnier profiles, but that holds true, again, for your small baits. Uh, you know, I, I still, whatever small profile bait I'm using, like a small little general, um, you know, that style build is still holds true but they love to eat small baits. I have, I have caught so many giant smallmouth bass on little tiny baits. I'm talking, you know, like what you would consider a crappie bait. So don't think that you can, you know, you can go too small for smallmouth. You definitely need to have small profile baits in your smallmouth bass arsenal. Number three, 
they love topwater. Some of the biggest smallmouth you'll catch are topwater fish. So I personally recommend the majority of the time you go out chasing smallmouth bass, you should start with a topwater bait. Don't throw it all day. Start with it. If you get bit in the first hour, stick with it. If you don't get bit, put it away. Go to your drop shot baits. Go to your other traditional smallmouth bass baits. But I will always have a topwater tied on. They love topwater, but they are also very picky. So when you get the right conditions, you can't beat a topwater. If they're not on it, they won't touch a topwater. So just keep that in mind. This goes back to what I was just saying about musky fishing. They, they will come up and investigate a giant topwater bait and they will hit it with such a vengeance that you think it's a big musky. I mean, the smallmouth are ridiculous about it. So when the topwater bite is on, you can't beat it. It's not always on, but that's why I say start with it, give it like an hour and see what happens. It's a definite, definite must. The next guys, they are super triggered by bright colors. So this is number four. I don't care what fluorescent color it is. Orange, chartreuse, pink, guys, it triggers them. They cannot stand it. They will get so aggressive towards a bright, crazy color. I'm talking, you know, you can go get some custom made baits that are like half lime green, half orange, you know, part chartreuse, the back of it's pink, and that is perfect. That's what you want. They love bright colors. And when I say love it, I don't know that they want to eat it, but they get so mad at it that they just can't stand it. So when you go smallmouth fishing, I highly recommend throwing crazy colors. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a full bait of crazy colors, but I would recommend having some sort of bright spot on the bait whether it's like a tracking dot on the on the back or it's a, a chartreuse belly or an orange tail whatever it is you need to have a little bit if not the entire bait of some crazy bright color they absolutely love that the last number five guys a lot of times with smallmouth bass some of the best places to fish are the places that look the most boring so if you're going down a bank and it's a sand straight bank, that sometimes is the best place to fish. They will, they are very much cruising, foraging fish. They have a home range, but they like just sand banks. They will, you know, if there's a, a two rocks on a mile long stretch of bank, you'll have fish that relate to those two rocks in a, in a general area. You know, they, they won't necessarily hold right on it, but they'll swim around that rock, you know, for a, a 50 yard radius. So guys, don't just write off the do nothing banks for smallmouth bass. A lot of times those are your money spots and they don't get nearly the amount of pressure that other traditional looking spots would get. So those are your five tips, guys. Longer, skinnier profile baits, brighter colors, um, fish some stuff that doesn't look all that great. Just a nice sand flat bank is great. Start with a top water bait. And last but not least, you can't go too small. I'm talking micro baits. I did a video on micro baits for smallmouth. Check it out if you haven't seen it. So those are my tips. Five things you need to know about smallmouth. Stay tuned for the next two days. We'll do the same for largemouth. And we'll do one for spotted bass as well. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Share it on your social media. Stay tuned for tomorrow's.